In chapter one, the focus was on systems of linear algebra equations a u is equal to b, and we we discussed three different ways to solve such systems. One was Gauss elimination. We discussed using the inverse of a, so u would be a inverse times b, as well as Cramer's rule. What we want to do here is for the special case when a is a real symmetric matrix, we want to devise a method that uses the eigenvalues and eigenvectors. This isn't necessarily the most efficient way to solve such systems, but it helps us to understand some of the implications of the properties we discussed in the last video. So we have a matrix A u, u equals b. A is real and symmetric here. It's n by n. It's non-singular so that we have a unique solution to the system of equations. b, of course, is a known right-hand side vector, and we'd like to determine the vector u. And just remember that for a real symmetric matrix with distinct eigenvalues, the eigenvectors are sure to be mutually orthogonal if we have the symmetric matrix with repeated eigenvalues, we can choose the constants such that the eigenvectors are mutually orthogonal as well. They're not for every constant, but we can choose the constants such that that is true. So we're gonna use a concept from chapter one, which at the time didn't seem terribly important, it seemed kind of parenthetical to what we were doing, and that is the idea of a linear combination. So we're gonna write the right-hand side vector b, which we know, we're gonna write it as a linear combination of the orthonormal eigenvectors of A. All right, so we've gotten the eigenvalues, we've gotten the eigenvectors of A, they're mutually orthogonal, and we've also normalized them to length one. So those are the Q vectors. And we want to write B as a linear combination of those Qs. So it's a constant times Q1 plus a constant times Q2 and so forth. We'll put hats on the A, so A1 hat, A2 hat. Uh, will be the constants that make up this linear combination. So how can I get these constants? If I know b, which I do, then I can take the inner product of q1 with b. And then in terms of the right-hand side, the linear combination, it's going to look like this. So I have the inner product of q1 with q1, q1 with q2, q1 with q3, all the way to q1 to qn. So that's the same as saying q1 transpose times q1, q1 transpose times q2, and so forth. Well, remember, the q's are all mutually orthogonal and normalized to length 1. So what this means is that the inner product of any one of these vectors with any other of the eigenvectors is going to be 0, because they're all mutually orthogonal. So all of these terms vanish. The only one that's left is where you have the inner product of q1 with itself. Because they're both normalized to length 1, that inner product is 1. So the inner product of q1 with b is simply a1 hat. a1 hat is what we're looking for. I know these two vectors. I can evaluate that inner product, and I get a1 hat. Excellent. That's true for all of the others as well. I just do inner product with q2, inner product with q3, and it isolates each of the individual constants, and I find that a n hat is simply the inner product of b with the corresponding q n, the orthonormal eigenvector. Okay, so all they've done is rewrite b as a linear combination of these mutually orthogonal and normalized eigenvectors. Let's do the same thing for the solution vector u. Now, in this case, I don't know you. I'm trying to find you. That's the solution that we're looking for. But let's start by writing the same linear combination. So u is a linear combination of q1, q2 through qn, now with a different set of constants. So I'll call them a1, a2 through an. So now how can I get these constants? If I get the constants, then I know the solution. Well, let's just substitute u along with b into our system of equations a u is equal to b. So here's a times u, the linear combination, is equal to b, its linear combination. Now I'm not going to do anything here on the right, that's just going to carry over, nothing's changing there. But let's take a look at the left hand side. So let's distribute the matrix a. So that's a times q1 here, a times q2, all the way through all the terms. But a q1 from the eigen relationship from which we got q1, that's equal to lambda 1 q1. 
So I can re replace AQ1 with lambda 1Q1. I can replace AQ2 with lambda 2Q2. So now if I look at the left side and right side of these equations, I have something constant times Q1 plus a constant times Q2. And then on the right, I have a constant times Q1, a constant times Q2. In order for these two vectors to be equivalent, these coefficients corresponding to each other on the, on the left or right hand sides have to be the same. So in other words, a1 lambda 1 has to be equal to a1 hat. a2 lambda 2 has to be equal to a2 hat, and all the way down the line. So now we have an expression for the a coefficients from which we can then form the linear combination and get the solution u that we're looking for. So here it is just written out. I have all my a's. Here's the general form for any n. The coefficient a n is a n hat, which is the inner product of b with q n, divided by the corresponding eigenvalue lambda n. So now I can write down the solution. We'll write it down here in summation form. It's just that linear combination. I'm just writing it in summation form. So here in the numerator is my a n hat, so inner product of b with q n, divided by lambda n. That whole thing, numerator divided by the denominator, is just a scalar. And that's times the corresponding vector q n. I add that up for all n, each of the terms in the linear combination, and I get the solution u that I'm looking for. So let me make some comments about this. This is really powerful. It introduces this idea of the linear combination and how we can use it. It also introduces the idea of using the eigenvectors of a matrix as the basis for something, literally the basis, the vector basis for doing something useful. So we're using the eigenvectors, which happen to be mutually orthogonal and normalized, as the vector basis for the solution of the system of linear algebraic equations. We're gonna see that theme over and over again. What you'll notice from this procedure is that the hard part is actually getting the eigenvalues eigenvectors. Once you have the eigenvalues eigenvectors, just forming that sum and evaluating it is very straightforward. So the real work is in getting the eigenvalues and eigenvectors. So let me summarize some of the notation that we'll be using through the rest of chapter two, just to try to be clear about what we're actually working with. So I'm always going to use u, the vector u, as the solution vector for a system of linear algebraic equations like a u equals b. u sub n, the subscript n is indicating that there are multiple ones of these, and those are the eigenvectors of a matrix A, of a general matrix A. If the eigenvectors are orthonormal, then instead of using u, we're going to use q. So q, un is a general eigenvector, qn is an orthonormal eigenvector. So that way it'll always be clear what we're dealing with. They're both eigenvectors, uns and qns, but one is orthogonal, one is not necessarily orthogonal. Let me summarize the four steps that we just did in getting this solution. And the reason why I want to summarize them in the following way is because we're going to use the exact same steps in chapter three when we're talking about differential equations and eigenfunction problems rather than eigenvector problems. We're going to use the same exact four steps, but applied to those functions in the context of solving differential equations. Here we're solving linear systems of algebraic equations. There we'll be solving linear ordinary differential equations. Same four steps, different contexts. It's a, it's a very interesting and very powerful parallel. All right, so let me just summarize quickly. So again, we have our a u equals b. a is real and symmetric, n by n. The first step, step one, is to extract out the a. So I have what I want to solve, I set it aside. a u equals b, that's what I want to solve, but let me just set that aside and do some work with a. So I'm going to extract out the a and form its eigenproblem. a q is lambda q. I'm implying through the use of q that I know that the eigenvectors will be mutually orthogonal and can be normalized to length one, which of course they can in the case of symmetric A. So I form the eigenproblem and I get the eigenvalues and the orthonormal eigenvectors of A. That's the first step. The second step then, so I'm gonna use those 
eigenvectors, which are orthonormal, as the basis vectors for representing the right-hand side vector b in a linear combination. Exactly like we had before, I've just written it in summation notation now. So I know what the a hat constants are in that linear combination. Third step is to do exactly the same thing for u as we just did for b. So I'm going to represent the solution u as a linear combination of the orthonormal eigenvectors of the matrix A. In other words, we're going to use the eigenvectors of A as the basis for representing the solution U. Again, written here in sum summation notation uh, as we did for B. And then finally, this, I've included the steps here again. This is the same steps as we had before. Now just written in summation notation for taking A U equals B, putting in the linear combination for B represented in terms of the vector basis using the Q's. Same thing for U. I distribute the A. I recognize that AQN is equal to lambda NQN from the Eigen problem. And therefore, in order for the coefficients of each of the Q's on the left and right hand side to match, that gives me an expression for the A sub N coefficients. So again, it's inner product of b with qn over lambda n. Nothing new, just representing it in a more concise way. And then I have my solution, which is exactly like we had before. So that's the four-step process applied here to solve a u equals b using a vector basis from the eigenvectors. We're going to do exactly the same thing for a differential equation. So we're going to write the function that's the solution to our differential equation as a linear combination of the eigenfunctions of the differential operator rather than the eigenvectors of the matrix A. It'll be the eigenfunctions of the differential operator. Same four steps. Here's an example. Uh, you can do this on your own. I would encourage you to use MATLAB or Mathematica or some mathematical software to try this. So use the approach that we just did. Once we get the eigenvalues, eigenvectors, you can use MATLAB and Mathematica to get them. Then this is really straightforward. This is an example, actually, that we did uh, three different times in Chapter 1 using Gauss elimination, Kramer's rule, and the inverse. So the solution we know is 1, 1, 1. U is 1, 1, 1. So I'd encourage you to try doing this problem using Mathematica or MATLAB, for example, just to, to confirm that that's what you get and just to practice with some of these operations.